Alright, this video is going to serve a dual purpose to my usual uh, subscribed viewers. In this video today, you're going to simply get to see me change the belts in my Iowa AD F770 tape deck from 1985. But for other people watching this video who aren't usual watchers of my videos, you're probably here because you have an Iowa tape deck not unlike this one that needs its belts changed and you've either read and or you've seen firsthand that it is exasperatingly hard to change the belts in these decks. So what I'm going to show you in this video is an easy way or at least easier way to change the belts without having to go through the very complicated process of changing them the normal way. So, as my uh, subscribers know, or what few have watched the last video, because it hasn't actually seen much popularity, I guess a lot of my subscribers just aren't into this type of stuff, I bought this deck at a thrift store in Callis, Maine for $18. It didn't work. Turned out the belts were bad. I replaced the belts using the trick that I discovered myself. I replaced the belts with rubber bands, and it worked absolutely perfect. Soon after, I purchased proper belts, which I'll show you in a moment, because the rubber bands are quickly starting to disintegrate. Um, this unit has a huge amount of wow and flutter now, but uh, yeah, those rubber bands, you know, they work, but they're not going to, I don't think they'll even last much longer, because when you turn it on now, you can hear a sort of squeaking, so I've purchased proper belts, and I'll show you them right now. I purchased the belts from a company called Studio Sound Electronics. Um, most people who need uh, tape deck belts go to a different website called turntableneedles.com. I purchased from this company, Studio Sound Electronics, because it saved me three or four dollars. They were slightly cheaper. The belts themselves, um, the two of them that I needed, this deck uses two belts. In total, they came to about $4. Shipping was about $7, so just over $11 total for these two belts. They shipped the belts in a bubble envelope. They did a good job, and they're in this plastic thing. Um, very nice packing job and a nice container they come in. So, the two belts I ordered for this deck and many other Iowa decks, one of the belts is a flat belt medium that is 8 inches in circumference and then the other belt, the longer belt, is a flat belt medium that's 8.6 inches in circumference which is actually 0.2 inches too small. Iowa's specification states that the longer belt should be 8.8 .8 inches but this particular company didn't have an 8.8 .8 inch belt it is perfectly fine to go a little bit smaller. You'll ju you might just have to do a speed adjustment after, which I'm gonna have to do a speed adjustment anyway, because I did adjust it for those rubber bands, which are way out of whack in terms of proper circumference. So what I'll do right now, I'll open up the deck, uh, show you the uh, transport mechanism and the rubber bands that are currently on it, and I will go about showing you how to replace the belts in many Iowa tape decks the easier way. So, for this particular deck, there's three screws on the left side, three screws on the right side, and then two on the back. So let me unscrew them. Okay, eight screws later, the back cover just lifts right off. Oh my god, I could not believe the first time I opened this, how packed it was inside. This is a freaking tape deck. Look at this thing. Holy crap. There's so many electronics that many of the circuit boards had to be placed on vertical planes because the main circuit board wasn't big enough. Oh my god. And then there's more electronics. There's the little vacuum nipple for the display. Be very, very careful. You don't want to break that or you'll destroy the display. And then here's the transport mechanism. So let me turn this thing around and then I'll show you how the belts are arranged. Okay, with a little help from the Rayovac Magnum, here is the deck. 
So we have this capstan motor right here and then this motor here that uh, pulls the heads up and down. So one belt, you can see I have a beige elastic band there, goes from around the motor to this flywheel on the left. And then the other band, you can see I have a blue rubber band there, goes from the inner part of the left flywheel to the inner part of the right flywheel. So it all spins, motor drives the left flywheel and then the left flywheel drives the right flywheel. And I'll, I have the unit plugged in right now, I'll actually turn it on. So you can see it's an interesting design, even when the tape's not even running, as long as the unit's turned on, the cap stands are always uh, moving. I guess this uh, reduces uh, spin-up time and stuff when the uh, when the uh, tape starts to play. I think this beige rubber band's awful loose. Let me turn it. Oops, turn it off. Ah, oh, that's right loose. I bet that's what's been squeaking. That is very loose. I'm surprised it's even been gripping it so loose. Well, that would be my wow and flutter problem, I bet. Yeah. The squeaking I get is the beige belt slipping. Watch. So that's been it. So, uh, now I'll unplug this thing first. You should always work with it unplugged. And I'll show you what you need to do to replace the belts in this the easier way. The first thing you need to do, you need to remove the power switch assembly. That's one screw right there. Okay, the screw is out. Now you notice this plastic arm here. You want to pull that out of the power switch. It'll be a bit tight. Mine's loose because I've done this a couple of times before. But once you, you gotta inch it there, inch it free from the power button and pull it out and just whack it right over the transformer there. And God help you if, uh, if something breaks. I should say that right now, I'm not responsible if you break your deck. Now what Iowa says you're supposed to do to change the belt, you're supposed to take the whole front panel off Take the whole deck assembly out, like remove the entire transport assembly, and from there you can take this back plate off so you can slip the old belts off and put the new ones on. Um, I tried that, I couldn't even get the deck assembly out, like, well I couldn't even get the front panel out either, it only come out about an inch and then I found out that it actually doesn't need to come out to take this part out even though the service manual says it does. But I could not for the life of me, and I tried pretty hard. I wish I hadn't have tried so hard, but luckily I didn't hurt anything. I tried pretty hard to pull the transport mechanism out. You're supposed to pull it out and then upwards, and it didn't go. It came like half an inch, and that was it. But once you have the switch removed, all you need to do to get to the belt is take the back plate off. Not actually even take it off. Just unscrew some of the screws so that it can come out just a little bit and that's all you need to take the belts off. Now the screws, there's one right there which as you can see I never got screwed back in the whole way, I don't have enough leverage. And there's one screw down there and then there's a screw right there and then a screw right here. You need to get one of these this is what's called an offset screwdriver. I bought this at uh, Johnson's Hardware in Calus, Maine. It came with a flathead variant as well. All together cost me about five bucks. And the reason you have to take the deck out is because a normal screwdriver can't get to those screws because of this circuit board in the way. Well, this one can. And that's what you need. Now, I sort of forget how many of the screws I had to take out to pull this back plate back far enough to get uh, the old belts out and put them rubber bands on. Um, I think all I had to take out was that screw 
and then this screw up here and that made it bend back far enough to do that so I'll try just removing that screw down there and this screw be careful because there's wires around here and uh, see what I can get once you get a screw out loose enough with your offset screwdriver you can probably take a tiny eyeglass screwdriver like this one and unscrew it the rest of the way if you're strong enough oh yeah there we go and they're pretty long screws too you gotta be really patient and very careful because using the offset screwdriver will take a long time to unscrew a screw and you want to be careful that it doesn't slip and take a wire or something with it okay it turns out that the screws are actually different sizes I don't remember that last time I did this I thought they were all long but whatever make sure the right screw goes back in the right place I guess so uh, I've got these two screws on the left out and see that moves very back and forth um, I actually did have enough leverage to uh, screw in these right screws a little bit tighter so that's good and these wells are plastic so make sure that uh, they don't bend too much because of this sagging down with those other two screws out but uh, now if we look in see that that black uh, center pin there that goes into the flywheels it separates so you can slip the belts out and slip new ones in there I just stuck the long screw back in here so that it doesn't sag downwards but you can still pull it out you'll want something like a nice long pair of tweezers to grab at the belts when you're pulling them out and you can use this blunt end to push them back in past that center pin on the flywheels I got the belt off the motor and it's fallen off the flywheel it's uh, just a second down there where the other belt is now I need to pull it back up over the flywheel and then down around the outside here so I can pull it past that center pin okay I got the entirety of the first belt I gotta pull it back so that pin separates from the flywheel and then get the belt out of there first elastic out so the order you should do this I should have mentioned this earlier but when you're taking belts off, the one that goes around the motor and the first flywheel comes out first, and then the one around both of the flywheels comes out second. Then when you put the new belts in, the one that goes around both flywheels goes in first, and then the one that goes around the first flywheel and the motor goes in next. Second elastic out. So, both elastics are now out looks pretty good so now with the new elastics open them up here I think they're gonna be difficult to go on because I have had them out before and they're quite tight they have to stretch a lot to get on there so you want to be careful but uh the smaller belt the 8 inch one that goes around the motor in the first flywheel and then the longer belt the 8.6 or if you got the correct size the 8.8 .8, it goes around both of the flywheels. So first we do the longer belt around both the flywheels. Okay it was kind of difficult but I got the first belt around the outside of this flywheel so it looks like it's on but it's not it's around this flywheel and then well my LED flashlight's gone dead so I could use the rail vac it's around that white plastic part right now and I gotta get it on the uh, flywheel itself so I gotta stretch it around there. Okay, first belt is on. You see I turn the first flywheel, or the second flywheel I guess, and the first one turns. I actually should have reversed the process, which is how I ended up doing it. Get it around this flywheel first, and then use the tweezers to pull the belt onto this flywheel, because that makes it easier, because you can access this flywheel better. Now to do the a shorter belt around the motor and the outside part of the first flywheel okay it's about 45 minutes later I thought getting the shorter belt on the motor in the first flywheel would be easier than the other belt around the two flywheels but it was actually about 10 times harder what I ended up doing was putting the belt around the flywheel itself and then I used the tweezers to grab onto the belt 
pull it around this uh, hex key here and I had the belt around the hex because I needed something with a hook and I pulled with all my might. I had to pull really hard and I got the belt around the motor pulley and uh, I didn't break anything in the progress so hip hip hooray, pop the champagne and when you've sobered up you can put the screws back in which I'll do right now and then we'll give it a first test. Okay, I got the deck screwed back in. Couldn't get this screw all the way uh, in here. I don't know why I could do it before, but I couldn't now. I don't know, stranger things have happened to me. But uh, now we just gotta put the power switch back in. So we just flip it down. I gotta get that plastic rod into the power button and then screw it back in. Okay, power switch is in. Time for the first time to power it on with brand new belts. See what we get. Oh, that's nice. Perfect. Show that again. They spin up instantly. Yep. Looks good to me. So now we'll stick a cassette tape in and see what the speed's like. Okay, I got speakers plugged in. Um, it turns out the headphone jack adapter I was using was faulty in the first video I made of this deck. It was faulty. Um, that's why the output was mono and it was also very low fidelity. So I threw it away and I'm using this one now and it sounds awesome. So, and it's in stereo, so we'll turn it on here, we'll stick in Don Henley again, and yeah, I've got to, i got to fast forward it to this, the one song on this tape that I actually recognize, so, put it in, rewind, oh yeah, Don Henley's kind of stiff too kind of tight to rewind. But our belts are working just fine. So now we'll wait for him to rewind. Okay, side two of Don Henley's rewound, so we'll turn on the music search here and find all she wants to do is dance. That's not the song. And it's very, very slow. So you're supposed to do this with a plastic flathead screwdriver, which I don't have, so I have to blindly adjust the speed while the unit's turned off. But uh, you stick a flathead screwdriver in that little port right there, you gotta do it blindly because you can't really see and uh, and turn it clockwise to speed it up or counterclockwise to slow it down so I gotta stick a screwdriver in there and turn it clockwise just a little amount decided to do something else, I covered the screwdriver the whole thing in masking tape, I did the handle too because that rests up against the transformer and I uh, actually adjusted it while it was playing I think I got it just right. Have a listen. I think I'll have a listen to my MP3 just to make sure, but I think I got it just right. Alright, I listened to my MP3, uh, I think this thing was running just a tiny bit slow, so I adjusted a little faster, I think it's perfect now. Just listened to Shania Twain, she sounds good too, so I think we're good to put this back together, 
and we're going to do one more test and that's going to be a wow and flutter test and how I'm going to do that I have a 400 hertz no it's a 440 hertz tone an, an A440 tone on my Olympus LS7 that I'm going to play into this and record on it and then we're going to play it back and see how it sounds okay I'll put back together now in goes the TDK SA60 and I just tripped the ADMS again that's nice I don't like that I don't like that problem I've asked on our audio karma and it's definitely not supposed to happen it is a problem funny thing is it didn't happen when the cover was off but it did when it was on I don't know um, we won't bother with Dolby noise reduction so now we take out the Olympus and oh it's already turned on I must have turned it on taking it out of the sleeve we put this jack into the earphone jack okay now we find my a440 ah there it is so there's my a440 tone source I'm gonna turn the volume up on the Olympus yeah, that's good so now we will record if we check the monitor there's the output on the tape it dipped down there because the, the Olympus is uh, infinitely looping it it's only a few seconds long so there's the source and there's the tape Not bad, not a bad difference. So we'll stop at 70. Okay. Stop the Olympus, and now I'll hook the Olympus up to the line out and record what this sounds like the tone being played back. Okay, so before I play back the tone to test the wow and flutter, let me give you a uh, direct uh, digital sample of the tone itself. So, so you can hear what it's supposed to sound like. This is the tone, uh, not through anything, just the digital file of the tone. Okay, and now we'll record on the Olympus. And now let's hear what the tone sounds like through this and see how steady it is. Well, I don't know about you guys, but to me that sounded absolutely awesome. I did not detect a hint of wow and flutter in this thing at all, and that's absolutely awesome. With them rubber bands on it, I had done this tone test, and when I played the tone back, it sounded literally like a violin. It had so much vibrato to it, just slowing up and down. There was so much wow and flutter, it, it just sounded like a violin. Um, this just sounded like a steady 440 hertz tone, so that's awesome. So I would say new belts, success. And uh, success, second time I've had to tear this thing apart to change belts, so that's awesome. So hopefully uh, those of you who need to do this uh, learned a little bit from the trick I tried. There are a couple of setbacks, a couple of screws I haven't been able to screw in the whole way. Uh, simply because I, I can't get enough leverage on the uh, offset screwdriver. I can't lean it down far enough because either the capstan motor or the sidewall of the unit is in the way. But uh, it sure as heck beats risking breaking something, taking the whole mechanism out, taking the whole friggin' deck apart. Um, it beats that. But uh, there is changing belts on the Iowa 80 F770 very happy now. I can now say that aside from the ADMS glitch, which only happens once in a while luckily, this thing now works absolutely perfect 
and if I wanted to I could sell it and it's worth I would say at least a couple hundred bucks now with the new belts in it so that's awesome so I'm gonna be making one last video of this deck um, I'm gonna record some music and play it back it'll be another music test now that I have that uh, headphone jack situation sorted out um, I can play back to you guys at a much higher quality than I did in the first video although I won't even be using the headphone jack at all I'll just be using the line out but uh, until next time